Well, joining me now at the desk to discuss how currencies are trading is John Kantz, currency strategist at RMB. Good to have you with us as I'm always, okay. John. Uh, maybe let's touch on the big news story uh, mm -hmm. that came out last week that everyone was looking out for as it might have an impact on the currencies. Janet Yellen's speech at the Jackson Hole um, mm -hmm. conference that took place and officially came to an end last week. Any particular highlights there that <coughs> piqued your interest? Uh, there wasn't that much for the market to take away. If you, if you read the, the, the commentary, some people have taken it slightly hawkishly, some people have mm -hmm. taken it as a uh, dovish speech. So really not that much in it. The, the speech, as expected, didn't give any signals on policy, rather focused on the detail about the labor market in the U.S. Of course, that is the key story. How much spare capacity is there in the U.S. labor market before, before inflation picks up? U.S. Treasury yields ended up last week higher, mm. not just because of, of Yellen, but also the Fed minutes coming out and also don't don't forget we had uh, not only Yellen speaking on Friday but we had Draghi speaking later that evening mm. and by contrast Draghi, Draghi was very dovish he had slightly hawkish maybe Yellen very dovish Draghi and we're seeing that reflected in the currency markets with big moves in euro dollar. Let's touch on that because I understand uh, part of Mario Draghi's mandate is to see the euro weaken ever so slightly are we seeing evidence of that in the euro dollar crosses? Yeah so I mean just just looking at euro dollar for instance we've gone down from one almost 140 euro earlier this year to 132. We've gone from 137 barely six, seven weeks ago all the way down to 132. So this weakness in the euro has been rapid and quite dramatic and of course that impacts on the relative rand crosses as well. Mm. Maybe that's something that we need to unpack because we've seen the rands being fairly range bounded, no significant movements. And whenever I speak to you or either s any of your colleagues, they always say, well, there's not much out there. We're clutching at straws. There is not much volatility out there. Do we know why there's no volatility? Yeah, so, so we've done quite a lot of work with this at, in RMBS. So exactly as you say, Gugu, volatility, not only in South Africa, but around the world, has dropped to record low levels. It's remarkable. And just as you say, the rand's mm. been range bound now for three, four months. Really remarkable how tight those ranges are. Daily moves, you can have four, five cents on the rand. You know, you, sh you used to have like 20 cents mm. on the rand. So, so look, there's various theories out there about why volatility is so low. Some people talk about the economic cycle. Some say the easy liquidity from the Fed, talking about the bull rally in assets or the changing in regulations. You know, le less traders around to drive the markets. We looked at it and what seems very clear to us is it's driven by the economic cycle. So in, in previous cycles, when the U.S. economy really started to accelerate, you saw volatility drop to, to very low levels. And what's interesting is in the previous cycles, these low volatility environments actually sustained for a number of years. It's, just not, it's not just a, a blip. So in other words, it could, we could be in for an extended period of quite low volatility. So when we take make reference to the U.S. increasing interest rates together with the Eurozone and that uh, the fact that that could pose, pose a potential threat to emerging markets like South Africa, are we reading too much into the situation? Uh, yeah, so look, uh, previous cycles when the Fed has been hiking have actually uh, been periods of very low volatility. So Fed hikes haven't disrupted that. Of course, we know now in a completely different environment with the extent of mm. the liquidity injections, the quantitative easing, etc. It's still going to be a big thing when the, when the Fed hikes. That's still you know, your first question. Mm. was back to you, and that, that is the major question that all of us in the financial markets need to need to try to figure out is when is Yellen, gonna, Yellen and the Fed going to start to hike? That is what's going to drive the rand in our domestic markets as well. Exactly. But coming closer to home, it does seem as though there isn't much happening locally that is impacting the rand. But I understand we have a lot of data out this week. The all-important second quarter GDP figure, whether that will indicate that, again, we're moving into a weakening environment and potentially a recession. Yeah, so we, we had a negative first quarter, so again, if we have a negative second quarter, it will technically be a recession. There are a few analysts out there forecasting uh, the second consecutive quarter of, of contraction. Mm. At RMB, we don't see that at all. We, we're looking for a relatively good 1.4% quarter-on-quarter improvement, uh, but, but, better than the, but better than the consensus expectation. But even with that number, we must realize the growth environment is very poor. RMB, we're looking for only 1.5% growth this year. So sure. very slow rates of growth domestically. F far less, certainly, than we were used to pre-crisis. 1.5%, that's not a very positive outlook. Mm -hmm. But also some of the other data we can expect later on this week, the uh, credit and trade data as well as local PPI. Yeah, it's, uh, in fact, a number of uh, data leading indicator. We've got PPI, private sector credit, money supply, sure. trade balance, government financing figures. Um, I guess we'll be after the GDP, the main ones for us would be the trade balance out on Friday, 
a very small deficit in, in the June figure, expected mm -hmm. to increase again in July. And of course, our key theme is these imbalances in the South African economy and how they can correct. So what we really need to see is imports starting to slow, exports starting to pick up. That would really be a favorable uh, environment, not only for the RAND, but just in general for business and the outlook in terms of growth. After trade, maybe private sector credit probably going to be around 8.5% relatively unchanged so, so so again indicating a very slow growth environment domestically sure. the big question for those watching is as an importer or exporter what do i do at these levels uh, so so still range bound in a range bound environment you just use the edges of the edges of the range so when when the rand's up at the 1080s if we get there there then exporters want to come in pick up the forward points as well importers mm. wait wait for the 1050s a uh, very cheap environment because volatility is low very cheap to buy option structures insurance top products as well. Sure. Well, tough times ahead, no doubt, regarding the currency, but always mm -hmm. a pleasure speaking to you, Thank John. You. That was John Cairns. He's a currency strategist at Orange.